Uh, my wife and I have got a ministry. We, are, we have a first television ministry, which is watched around the world. It's called uh, Kingdom Insight, uh, where we bring the word of God to different nations around the world. And uh, here, actually, in Ontario, you can watch on uh, Rogers Channel 20. Uh, but there are so many channels that we are on around the world. And then uh, we travel extensively uh, uh, to preach at the crusades, conf- conferences in the States and around the world. Uh, when we connected with Pastor Fuller, we, we knew already that God was bringing us together uh, for the work of God. And uh, tonight, I think we are here for a special service. It's crossover. It's crossover. I don't think you are excited. Uh, It's crossover. Now, now that's why I won't talk too much about me or what we do. Uh, I think we'll connect. We are here in Guaf. Uh, This is where we we live now. And, uh, you know, nowadays you can just Google. You'll find some stuff which we're doing. But tonight I want to stay on target with what God wants to do for you and for me as we cross over. There are certain things that we need to know as we begin a new year to to, to understand that we need, first of all, the presence of God. And uh, my title this morning for those who are writing is Crossing Over with the Presence of God. Now, you got to understand something. Dead religion is a religion that has got no presence of God. What differentiates Christians from any other religion, it's not the word Christianity. It is the presence of God. What distinguishes people of God, it's not any other thing. It is the presence of God. Now, you got to understand if you start your year without the presence of God, it becomes very difficult. You can be a Christian, you can pray, you can do whatever you want to do, but without the presence of God and knowing how to tend to the presence of God, each time you work up, each time you you, you are asleep, each time you end your day, to understand there is a presence that you and I need. I want to take you to the book of Exodus chapter 33 uh, uh, as a... I know this was just a short notice when he gave me, but I began to to think, you know, um, uh, to say, God, what is it that we need to enter into 2018 with? For some of you in this place tonight, 2017 hasn't been so good. We heard a testimony of one guy that said it has been uh, good and bad, good and bad. But I believe God can correct the wrongs. The Bible says where the presence of God is, there is what? Liberty. Not only liberty, there is a freedom. Not only freedom, there is a fruitfulness. I want to take you to the book of Exodus. We'll begin to read from uh, 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 verse 12 there. This is Moses. I like Moses. At this time, he has encountered God before. But he's going to do something that is so different and there is something I want to point out to you. I don't want to preach to you. I don't want to preach. I, wanna, I just want to share some nuggets tonight. Because it's not about preaching tonight. We want to cross over from 2017 into 2018 with the presence of God. Or knowing the presence of God. Or acknowledging to understand that we can have all that we have in within our skills. But without God being present in our lives, we will fail. What makes us depressed, what makes us stressful, what makes life so difficult is when we don't have the presence of God. Jesus died on the cross not to give us religion. He died on the cross to restore the presence of God back into the people's lives. Because remember, Adam and Eve were living in the presence of God. And when sin entered the world, what it did is that it separated people from the very presence of God. Because when you understand that with the presence of God, you can do all that 
God created you to do. And without the presence of God, you can have knowledge, you can have the skills, but you still continue to struggle. I don't want you to struggle in 2018 because God has given us the skills and, and, and the tools and the weapons in, 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 in the sense of his presence to, to go with us in 2018. Here is Moses. It's, uh, we read, it says, uh, one day Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. Now, let's back up a little bit. If you read in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 13, you, when God was first calling Moses, Moses first said, what did he say? Well, send someone else. Send someone else. But here, Moses has, is catching up to what God wants to do. He says, well, you've been telling me to lead these people, meaning to cross over to go into the promised land. God has been telling Moses, cross over with the people into the promised land. But Moses is going to do something that is very unique, and it's a model for us tonight to understand. We can't enter 26, uh, uh, 2018 without God. Here Moses says, uh, you, 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 you have been telling me, take these uh, people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name and look favorably on you. Now, look at this. God has told Moses, I know you by name. I look at you with favor. If it was you and me, we'll be content right there. We'll be like, oh, God knows my name. Oh, my name is written in the Lambs of God. I'm not content with that. I want him and all of him. So Moses isn't satisfied just because God knows him or his favor is upon his life. Look, in life there are levels. And you're going to see what distinguishes the people of God here. Moses knows. God knows my name. Thank you. I look at you favorably. Thank you. We need the favor of God. But Moses knows I need something more bigger, more greater, more powerful, more tangible. And that is the presence of God. He continues to say here. He says uh, in, a, in, a, in verse 13. If it is true that you look favorably on me. Let me know your ways so I may understand you more, more fully. And continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. First, he begin to say, well, I want to know your ways. Remember the children of Israel knew the acts of God. They didn't know the ways of God. And what causes us to know the ways of God is knowing the presence of God. Because when you know God is present, you will know his ways. Where there is sin, there is no presence of God. People know about God, but they don't know the ways of God. What makes you and me unique to do something tangible in life, it's not because we know God. We have to know the ways of God, the character of God, the nature of God. How does he operate? How does he work like? You know, you can know all you want to know about God until you know his revealed character and power. Then you're going to have the confidence to say, my hope is built on Christ alone. How we will go through 2018 with my hope on Christ alone. Meaning he will fight for you. He will defend you. He will stand with you. And with God and in God, there is nothing that the enemy can do to destroy the destiny that God created you for. We're talking about the praises of God. Here he continues, um, uh, Moses continues, and he says in verse 14, now the, God is replying to him, sorry, I will personally, look at this, it's getting personal, say personal, it's getting personal, it's getting personal here, God wants to be personal to you, he is not just a figure that we read about in the Bible, 
He's not just a religious stuff that we preach about. He wants to be personal in you. He wants to be the person in you. The Bible says when he got the, the Christ in you, he's what? The hope of glory. Why? He is present. God, he wants to take personal. He wants to be too personal with you. That is the difference that uh, we see with any other religion. They don't have a personal relationship. Now, if you look what's happening here and what Jesus came to do on the cross, he came to restore our relationship personally with God. Meaning you don't have to go into a corner in the booth to confess your sin or to have somebody go and access God for you. Jesus restored that relationship so you and me can boldly go to the Father and say, God, I need your help. God, I need your healing. God, I need you to make me fruitful. And God will do it. You don't need any person in between apart from Jesus. That is what God came to restore. He did not come to restore religion. He came to restore our personal relationship with God. God wants to be personal with you. And when God is personal in your life, let me tell you something. The enemy cannot play games with you. Again, God wants to be a person you just talk to. Uh, this, uh, this um, three weeks ago, when our son was born, it was one of the most traumatic moments I've ever experienced in my life. I could have lost my wife and my son at the same time. It was uh, as bad as it gets in the labor room. And I, I'm, I, I know lots of people around the world. I'm known by so many people. I felt so lonely in that moment. I had nobody to call. And then I realized I have this person who sticks closer, more than a brother, more than religion, more than anything else. His name is Jesus. I stormed out of that room as, as my wife, she was dying here. My son was dying there. I went into, into the hallway and then I did not begin to pray like shout or anything. I talked to God and I have been saying I talked to God for the first time time and the result is what you see. My wife is here. My son is good. No healthy complication. When you talk to God, God will act on your behalf. All God wants to do is to be personal with you. He's the person you talk to in the morning. Good morning, my father. Good morning, Holy Spirit. How is it going? How are we going to get by? How is the 2018, my father? Talk to God. Don't make him this spiritualized figure. He is a person and he has put the Holy Spirit as a person in your life. You can talk to him and you can do what he wants to do in your life. You see, people don't understand. They think the religion is just this. No, no, no. God wants to be personal in your life. Here, Moses continues. Sorry, God is replying to Moses. I will personally go with you, Moses. And I will give you what? Rest. What too many Christians don't have is rest. We are restless. We know the word. We go and worship. We pray. We do everything. But we don't have rest. Let me tell you. Why we don't have rest is that, it's, it's that we don't have the presence of God. Because where the presence of God is, there is liberty. And where there is liberty, there is a freedom. And where there is a freedom, there is rest. You can rest. You don't have money in your account. You can rest. You are sick. You're looking for healing. You can rest. You know a person who can heal you. You know a person who has all the power. You know the person who has all the keys. You know the person who makes things work. And his name is my God, Abba Father, Adonai, Elohim, Yahweh, El Shaddai. He is my provider. When you know God at a personal level, things get personal. You can't live in stress. Too many Christians are depressed. They have the Bibles, they have 20 Bibles, some even in their trunk in their vehicle. And they're still depressed. Why? 
We haven't understood that the personal God wants to be personal to me, to walk with me. When I'm walking, when I'm waking, when I'm going anywhere, he wants to be the person that sticks closer than anybody else. Here he says, uh, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Oh, man. Have you read that scripture? I'm not going to panic. You see, religion has paralyzed our relationship with God. Number one. We need to understand what Jesus died for. He did not just die for you and me to go to heaven. Heaven is a bonus that you get when you've done the work of God here on earth. Because God will be like, well done, faithful servant. I've never seen a person who hasn't done nothing to be told, well done. So if you're waiting to go to heaven before you do something for God here, then I'm, I'm here to announce to you, do something for God because God's presence is here and 2018 must be your year of doing something tangible. Something tangible. When people see you, what do they see? Religion or the presence of God? Ask yourself that question. When people see you, do they see religion or the presence of God over you? Oh, maybe that's too deep. I don't know. Let's. I don't know. But 15. Then Moses said, uh, if you don't personally, it's getting personal. Moses isn't send, saying, uh, send some angels. For some of you, say, just send some guardian angels. Okay, they are good, but I need the real master here. I need the real one who made them. For some of you, oh, just send some guardian angels as I go. No, I need the one because if he's present, then even the angels will be present. The Bible says they are ministering, ministering what? Spirits. Where God is, they must follow too. You've cheapened yourself asking for something small. Ask for something big. God himself say, God, I want you in my life and I want you now. I don't know your level, but my level is totally different. I want God. Without God, I'm nothing. Without God, I'm totally dead. I was dying in sin until he showed up. Thus, I don't need religion alone. I want the master himself. Here, Moses, it's getting too personal. He says, uh, I, uh, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. And, uh, you know, it will be a tragedy if you enter 2017 without the presence of God. Moses could have gone. Remember God said he's, he's shown favor upon him. He knows his name. That could have been enough for Moses to say, I'm taking off. I'm going. But Moses knew that's not enough. We need to cross to, to possess the land that you've been promising our forefathers. And we know there are enemies there. We know there will be discouragement on the way. We know there will be battles on the way. So just you knowing my name or looking at me with favor won't help me fight my enemy. I want your present because where God is present, the enemies scatter. <laughs> Look how Moses is thinking here. Look how Moses is thinking. Very unique. Really very unique. Very unique. Yeah, you know my name. Thank you. You've got, uh, you show me favor. Thank you, Lord. But you know what? I'm going to face discouragement. Just knowing your name, just you knowing my name won't help me when I'm discouraged. Discouragement can be overcome where the presence of God is. Because there is what? Rest. Do you want to go through 2018 while resting in the presence of God? Like resting. Nothing panicking. I'm not panicking where my paycheck is going to come from. And I'm not going to manipulate God. I'm not going to preach to you prosperity message. I have a bigger God. 
He owns everything in the world. I trust him. I stand in him. I stand on his word. Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach, they knew God so well such that they told King Nebuchadnezzar, even if God doesn't save us, we will not worship you. We know this God very well and personally. <laughs> oh, maybe you've never heard this one before. Personally, God wants to be personal to you. This is the word, <laughs> the word, the real stuff. Because when you know personally God, then everything must pave the way for that person in your life. I remember when you know, uh, when you're dating, for some of you, when you, you know, dating, when I started courting my wife, everything paved the way. I, I bought flowers, not to be told, oh, can you get me some flowers? I just went to the flower bouquet and brought them. I love you. Oh, I want to take you out for, 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 for a cup of tea. I just took her. It just came. Look, when you know the person of God, even the things that comes to entangle in our lives must pave the way. Why? Because you have a person with you. His name is God. He may be invisible, yet his power and his tangibleness is visible. Oh, is it too deep or? Are we okay? Crossing over. Crossing over. Say, are we crossing over? We're crossing over with the presence of God, with the glory of God. Say, I'm crossing over with the presence of God, with the power of God. No more cheap stuff. For real, no more cheap stuff. Keep your religion alone. I want God. Here, let's go. Let's, let's read. We haven't finished. Then Moses said what? If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. And then he goes on 16. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me? He's asking now the question. If you're going to see I'm a king's kid, then I got to see you flow in the king's power. If you're going to see I'm a Christian, I want to see you flow in the power like Christ. Because Jesus wants us to be in his likeness. Now, look here. He says, that, well, you look at me favorably. But I want something different here. And on your people as well. But if you don't go with us. For your praises, among us, sets your people and me apart from other people on earth. Your other translation will say this, distinguishes. Meaning your praises is what distinguishes us from any other people, including our enemies. So if you just send me with favor, if you just send me by knowing my name, it won't be enough. Because what distinguishes us is the power, the very power and presence of God. So Moses is trying to tell God here, I'm thankful for all that you've given me. I am content for all that you've given me, but I know I can have all of you. He continues here. 17, the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by my name. And then Moses now gets, he's getting it. He's just going deeper into it. Because if God is personal with you, then he has to show up. It's a personal matter. If you are sick, he must feel that my son is sick because it's personal. Have you ever, for some of you who've got kids, your kid just hit themselves so bad and your tears just drops just like that? Have you ever done that? Or somebody you love so much and uh, they, maybe they're, they are almost dying on the, on, on, in, in the hospital and uh, you didn't plan on crying and then tears just comes down like that. Why? They are too personal to you. 
You don't just cry just like that. You won't just cry for a stranger like that. You just, oh, poor man. That's all you're going to say. For somebody who is no person, oh, poor man. Oh, that little poor girl. But with somebody so close to you, you're going to cry. Why? It's personal. When God is personal in your life, everything you ask, it has to be done. It has to be done. That's when the scriptures comes in to say, he will give you the desires of your heart. Why is that scripture very important? It's talking to a people who have a personal relationship with God, not to religious people. Know me personally, and I will give you the desires of your heart. Here Moses gets it too personal, and he says in verse 18, Then show me your glorious presence. Wow. You see, religion will show just a suit, just like a suit, oh, I'm a pastor with a suit. It doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. It really doesn't. Two Bible, bigger Bible, I've got a bigger one there because I left, I was preaching this morning in Toronto. I left my Bible in Toronto, so I had to, be, to bring a bigger, bigger one there. But you, and look at this. It's big, that one, too big. But look at this. God doesn't care if you, take, you have a bigger Bible. What he cares is you having a personal relationship with him. A personal relationship. A personal relationship. That is what Jesus died for. That is why he sacrificed his son so that we can have that personal relationship and enjoy his glory. In Hebrew, it's called kavod. A sheer gravity, meaning tangible. And where the glory of God is, the enemy paves the way. Let's read this. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you. For I will show mercy to anyone I choose. Now look at this. When the presence of God shows up, what, what, is show, what shows up as well? Mercy. Are you reading that text? And I will show what? Compassion to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face for no one may see me and leave. The Lord continued, look, stand near me on, the, on this rock. As my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and let you see me from behind. But my face will not be seen. What is going on here with Moses? Moses could have just heard that instruction, lead the people. And he's leading them. But Moses was smart enough. Listen, people of God. Just because you are called doesn't mean that you have to go. He can call you, but is his presence with you? Just because you have a gift doesn't mean that, oh, you have an a, a, a entrepreneurial spirit. Doesn't mean that you can start off right away and you, you excel. Is the presence of God with you. Because where the presence of God is, doors opens. Where the presence of God is, favor is shown. We are on all those nine different TV stations and we don't pay for them. It surprises you. Why? Because if God has called you and he is present in your life, he will open those for you to do what he created you to do. For some of you who are in universities, I want you to take this message very important as you cross over to 2018. Get hold of the presence of God. Get hold of the presence of God. Some of you, you're praying for your family members, those people that maybe people who are not doing too well. Get hold of the presence of God. 
and begin to pray, not religiously, but to pray from a position of knowing the praises of God. We will go wherever you proclaim that word. Moses knew the importance of having the praises of God. And it's unfortunate today we, the church, have forgotten about that. We have forgotten the reason why Jesus died. We have forgotten why he had to go to the cross. He went to the cross to restore the power. In the book of Acts, we hear, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will receive what? Power. The Spirit of God is what? God's praises. As we cross over, one thing that I know is that 2017 had its ups and downs, but God is going to correct that. Insanity is uh, trying to do the same stuff and expecting the different result. If you think 2018 will 2017 will just leave you alone just because 2018 is on the door, you are lying to yourself. Psalms 11 verse 3 says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Meaning, if you begin, if, you, if you've been on this foundation that has got cracks, you know it has let you down in 2017, and you want to go with it in 2018, it will be the same result. Nothing will change. And if you are not careful, you begin to question God's ability to bring transformation in your life or to answer your prayers. And all God is saying is saying, you have some broken nets. Mend the nets. Things are slipping through. The blessings of God has been coming towards you, but they are slipping through. Why? There are some cracks where you need to look at. Mend those nets. You can't allow what happened in 2017 to go with you in 2018. You must refuse that. You must refuse that. Some of you in this place, I can tell through the spirit, the enemy has been bullying you. You've been bullied in so many ways. Bullied in your finances. Bullied in your health. Bullied in your desires to do what is good. The enemy has constantly been at the door. And God is saying today it's the time to cut it off. So that you enter into 2018 with the praises of God, with the spirit of God, with the power of God. Look, when Jesus began to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, the first thing he said was that, repent for the kingdom of God has done, has arrived. And then he continued to say what? The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to do what? To set the captives free. Now you got to take that word. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. The spirit is the presence of God. So Jesus was saying, the presence of God is upon me. I'm coming to dismantle those demons. That's why when you begin to read the ministry of Jesus Christ, even if it lasted for three years, he did wonders. He did greater things. Why? Because it declared right from the beginning, the spirit, the presence of God, the glory of God, the kavod, the sheer gravity of God is upon me. Now, when God is upon you, let me tell you something. You can do wonders. What makes a difference in our lives he is having the presence of God, having God himself in our lives. How do you start your day? How do you start your year? You start by returning back to the one who made you. I want you to stand and I want to, uh, uh, my brother to come and play the keyboard a little bit. The gentleman that was playing the keyboard there. We're going to have a countdown. But I believe we're going to release the word for you to enter into 2018 from a victorious point of view. Enough is enough. For the enemy to bully you through sickness, through sin. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Jesus said on the cross, it is what? Finished. Meaning enough was enough. He had to bring the power of God back. That's why Jesus was saying, it is finished. The power of God has been restored. 
You are in this place. You don't even know that God, God's presence is in your life. You are losing out, my friends. You are saved because of the power of God through His grace. And that power is available for you and me to walk in it. 2018, must know, we're coming, we're coming differently. We're coming, we're coming. We're coming with the power of God. We're coming with the presence of God. We're coming with the wisdom of God. We're coming with the life of God. We're coming with the abilities of God. We're coming with the favor of God. We're coming with the anointing of God. We're coming with the spirit of God. We're not playing no games. We're not playing no games. We're coming with God. We're walking with God. We're going to walk personally with God. We're loving this God. We're going to work with this God. We're going to do what he asks us to do. You know, you know, you know, you know one thing I want to share with you people of God. If you don't understand what I'm sharing here, it becomes very difficult to even hear the voice of God. You can't hear the voice of God without the presence of God. That's why many people, man of God, they hear voices, but they are not of God. God speaks where His presence is. He was speaking to Moses because He was present. And I believe this evening, today, to this tonight, God's presence is in this building tonight. And God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you about your destiny. He's speaking to you about your future. He's speaking to you about your callings. He's speaking to you about this ministry, this church. He's speaking to you about everything that he has called you for. Don't settle for less because God is about to open the flat gates of heaven for you to walk in his glory, for you to walk in his presence, for you to be all he had called you to be. If they counted you down, now it's time for them to know you don't do things because of your ability. You don't do things because of your knowledge. You don't do things because of your qualification. The Bible says he qualifies those he calls. And I believe tonight is qualifying you to enter into another dimension. To operate from the power of God. The enemy today loses out. If you can believe with me. If you can stand with me. And believe the word of God. And believe Jesus that is doing his thing in my life. Pick it up, my brother. Pick it up. Just go. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, my brother. I pray for you to release that music right now. I pray for you to release that angelic music right now that is going to release the people, those that are watching and those who are in this place. I pray for you to release that music, my brother. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. For God is about to do something in your life. For God is about to shift your career. He's about to shift your position. What has been stolen from you has to be repaired tonight. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, reign in this place. Holy Spirit, reign in this place. Reign in this place. Reign in this place. Talk to Him right now. Talk to Him right now. Talk to Him right now. If you are a couple, your wife or your husband is in the house, hold hands. Begin to talk with God right now. Talk to Him about what you desire Him to do. Come on, lift up those voice to Jesus. Lift up those voice to Jesus. Tell Him who He is. Tell Him who He is. For he is worthy, he is holy, he is righteous, he is powerful, he is glorious, he is majestic, he is our salvation, he is our victory, he is our life, he is our hope, he is our healer, Jesus alone is our healer, he is our healer, he is in the house tonight, he is in the house tonight, talk to him, talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Walk around if you need to walk around. Fight for your future. Fight for your future. Fight for your destiny. Speak to God. Speak to your Father. He is listening to you in this atmosphere. 
Speak to God. I dare you to speak to God. And look what he's going to do in 2018. Lift up that voice. Whatever you believe in God for 2018, lift up that voice. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Tell him who he is. Tell him what you desire. He's about to do something new. Father, we thank you tonight, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Spirit of the Sovereign God. You are the God who answers our prayer. You are our God who hears our prayer. You are our God who listens to our prayer. Today, we invite you to have a communion with us. Be personal in our lives. Be personal in our lives. We invite you today in our lives once again. Be who you say you are. Be who you say you are, my God. Be who you say you are, Jesus. Reveal yourself strong. Reveal yourself strong in the name of Jesus. Oh, He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Lift up those hands towards heaven. As a sign of total surrender to say, God, I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. Without you, I am nothing. Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. Tell your God, God, I can't do it without you. I can't enter 2018 without you. We need your presence. We need your presence. We need your presence. We need your power. We need your presence. We need your glory. We need your glory. We need your presence. Your presence in our marriages. Your presence in our children. Your presence in this city of of Guelph, your praises in the nation of Canada, your praises around the world. We need your praises, oh Lord. We need your praises. 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 We are done without you, oh God. There are a few people you've been so discouraged. Continue to pray, continue to pray, continue to pray. There are a few people in here you've been so discouraged. And you have been experiencing on and off stress and depression. It has paralyzed even your prayer life. And your relationship with people. It has caused you to lose the vision and the plan. And the desire to live and the vision of what God called you to do. And quickly, if you are in this building right now. I want you to come quickly to the front here. I want to pray with you quickly. This is a word just for a specific people. Please don't feel ashamed. We are not here to embarrass you. We are here to enter 2018. If it's you, come to the front, quickly. And there is a few in this building. I have a special word for you. I'm going to give it to you without a microphone. You don't know where to go. You don't know the direction. You don't know. It's like you're just leaving, uh, just, just getting by. You need the direction from God. You need God to speak life once again and to speak the direction you should go. You've been trying and trying and trying to hear the voice of God. It has been difficult. I want to invite you quickly to come to the front here. I've got only a few time because I have to close at 11.55 and then we'll pray for people after that as well because we're going to go to our countdown. Listen, listen people of God, don't feel ashamed. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Don't enter 2018 the same way. This is a unique moment where God is speaking to destinies here. He is restoring destiny in the lives of people. He is restoring things that the enemy has stolen from you. He is restoring every confidence that the enemy has stolen from you. Don't feel ashamed right now. Don't feel ashamed right now. Continue, continue speaking to God. He is the one who does everything. I'm just a servant. I got no power except through God. 
I am nothing without God. So continue to pray, seek God. And I know He's going to begin to do something right now as we pray together. Don't feel ashamed. Come to the front. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel ashamed. And then there is a few as well. And this is my last call until we pray for these people. And then at the end, we're going to pray just to impart the presence of God, to invoke the presence of God in your life. There's a few people in this building. You've come from struggle after struggle financially and in all dimension. It has been just like struggle after struggle. That is not the will of God for you. God wants to change that. And I invite you to come and we're going to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Continue with that song. Continue. Continue, please. Play something for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to start with you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your strength. Right now, right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Receive strength right now. Strength right now. Strength right now. In Jesus' name, strength right now. We command freedom, freedom, freedom. In Jesus' name, every voices that is not of God, that has been whispering lies to you, we command them to go. We command to go. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, your freedom is now. Your freedom is today. Your freedom is tonight. Be released right now. Be released right now. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit. You intimidating spirit of anxiety, I command you to live out right now in the name of Jesus. You have no legal rights to be in this body. We command you to live right now. We command you to live right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Thank you, Lord, for freedom, 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 freedom and life, 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 the life of Christ, the life of Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, my sister. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, power in your hands. Oh, there is power, oh, power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power, oh, power in the name of the Lord. There is power, a power in the name of the Lord. There is power, oh, power. There is power, oh power, in the name of Jesus. Pick it up, man of God. Oh, Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Restoration right now. Right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your restoration. Receive your restoration. In the name of Jesus. Now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is a new beginning for you. This is a new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, saturate this place with your praises. Saturate this place with your praises. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Restoration. Restoration. Lift up those hands, my sister. You have a bright 2018. The struggles of 2017 are gone. In the name of Jesus. Now take it. Take it. Take it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. The power. Power, power, oh power in the name of Jesus. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Power, power, receive that healing. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. My dear sister, there's something that God, we came up for something else, and God is saying He's going to heal you. Is that not correct? Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, be touched. your glory let your glory fall keep time for me please keep time for me please thank you Jesus oh Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord restoration 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 he's restoring everything in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you thank you for this new beginning new beginning new beginning in the power and praises of God. Now receive it, 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 receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glorious God. Oh, glorious God. Thank you, Father. Every voice is Lord. Every voice is of doubt. We command them to live. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just lift up your hands, my sister. Oh, we thank you for this new beginning. Oh, yes, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Today we bestow the glory and the praises of God upon your life. Every lies of the enemy will command them to go in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare in Jesus' name it's a new season. A new beginning, 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 a new beginning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, power, 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 power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father.